church when a pastor has a congregation like this he's already a success in america are you hearing me no the largest church in the united states of america is this congregation the largest church in the united states of america and there the largest church is this congregation and yet this is not the church this are just pastors pastors and a few of the partners i was talking to a minister a very renowned minister not long ago he said how big is your ministry i said we are on all seven continents of the world he said wow then he asked me are you as big as one of the churches he mentioned i said that is one congregation in suruleri that's what i told him and i wasn't exaggerating so that's just one congregation i said when that pastor calls his churches together there'll be no stadium to take the members and that's the truth and i was saying with all humility <laughs> praise god no you tell me any great man of god who can call a meeting any great man of god who can call a meeting and 2.1 million people will gather you remember the program at port harcourt 2.1 million people F sorry 2.5 sorry i'm sorry i'm, I'm so sorry hallelujah 2.5 one meeting then you talk about the one that happened in lagos for three days for three days people could not come into lagos neither could they travel out of lagos if you had to come to lagos you had to come with an aeroplane if you are going to use a car to come to lagos forget it Praise the Lord. And then one small boy from Tonga. We ask me, why do you worship? Why do you people respect the man of God the way you do? There are two ways to answer such questions. Depend on who is asking. If the person has been in the faith, you tell him to kneel down and face the wall. You know why that is a very mild way of teaching that person if it were in the days of david a young man ran to david and said may all those who seek your life be like the king and david was listening and said yes tell me more he said king saul knowing that he was against you i had the opportunity to eliminate him meanwhile david knew how king saul died and he asked the young man and said how were you not afraid you were not afraid to lay your hands on the lord's anointed you were not afraid you were not afraid then he called one of the young soldiers to eliminate him when he severed his head from his body then david said your mouth has testified against you in other words Talking against a man of God carries the penalty of death. Someone in today, today, the person may not even die physically, but everything concerning him dies. He 
begins to rotate in one place for several years. So those who are journalists, they, they better write about trees and sun and moon and take their hands away from a man of God. If you are told to talk about a man of God, in your interest, just write twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. So you deliver yourself. Hallelujah. Dare to believe the man of God. As I watched on C-Flix, when a great man of God was awarded the honorary degree of Doctor of Divinity, when the orator from Benson Dawsa University was speaking, I took a particular line from his oratory. He said, the man of God is too persuaded to be dissuaded. He said he's too persuaded to be dissuaded. How true. How true. He's not just persuaded, he has become the message. When you look at this ministry, when you go to the exhibition, the exhibition center, where the different arms of ministry are being exhibited, you will not ask anymore if you used to what do they do with money as you walk through those cubicles you don't just see cubicles you see visions as you walk through those cubicles tears will come out of your eyes tears will come out of your eyes to see the impact the enormity of impact of this great ministry. Why would you not be a partner? Praise the Lord. Dare to believe in the vision of this ministry. Dare to believe in the vision of this ministry this is one ministry where you can go wrong i just know that only the anointing can do things like this little children from the ages of two know pastor chris it's not normal it's supernatural Old women without teeth know how to pronounce Pastor Kish. It's not normal. It's supernatural. Just before he left yesterday, if you're getting angry that, oh, why is he talking about the man? Is that not enough message? You better arrange your face and be smiling. Listen. I'm going to show you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to walk you through some scriptures as time permits me. Yesterday, you were here. Just before the man of God left, he gave a word of knowledge. He said, there is someone here who just got healed in one of the ears. You heard him. I heard him. Pastor spoke English. A French lady got healed. But he said it in English. The person who got healed was French. Is that not a miracle? <laughs> the other day, by the Spirit, he made Brother Ralph, a millionaire in split seconds. (laughs) 
Brother Raf, Brother Raf, come to America for one week on vacation. Hold on. I've not finished. Do not come empty. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's take a look at some scriptures. Turn with me to Acts chapter 26. Glory to God. Acts chapter 26. This is remarkable. As I read through the scriptures, tears came out of my eyes. Oh. We're going to read it very quickly and then highlight a few things here. We're talking about daring to believe the man of God. Acts chapter 26, we read from verse 1. It says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, knew all the Jews. Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify, that after the most strictest, strictest sect of our religion, I leave the Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. Unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake? King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Someone says the miracles in that man's ministry, are they real? I have a question. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with them that God should raise the dead? That the cripple should get up and walk? A minister asked me, he said, are those miracles really real? I said, how do you mean? He said, do doctors verify them? People can ask questions. I'm talking about, these are not questions from unbelievers. These are questions from ministers who attended seminaries. <laughs> not far away from a cemetery. <laughs> because... Because these miracles are in the Bible. Jesus performed these miracles. The man of God believed and he performed the miracles. And I asked the man of God, I said, are you born again? He said, yes, of course. He gave me an attitude. I said, all right. I said, but you and I know that the greatest miracle is salvation. Can you just tell me the doctor who verified your salvation? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 9. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and being exceedingly mad against them i persecuted them even unto strange cities whereupon as i went to damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest at midday o king i saw in the way a light 
from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me and when we were all falling to the earth i heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the hebrew tongue saul saul why persecutest thou me it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and i said who art thou lord and he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Hallelujah. So I have appeared unto you to make you a minister. You have been brought to this place to be made a minister. Here is not referring to your call. Your call is not in dispute. That you're a pastor is not in dispute. The Lord said to him, stand on your feet. Stand on the vision of this ministry. Stand on your convictions. Stand on your persuasions. Wherever you are, give the Lord a voice. Stand on your feet. For this purpose... You were made a minister. And look at what he says. Verse 17. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles. Whom, unto whom now I send thee. To open their eyes. To turn them from darkness to light. Is that not what we're doing everywhere? That 